this is great. This is uh, a bit much, but... Where are the teachers? Clap, yes. So many, you're excited. You teach kindergarten, you're all like, what do you teach? What? Grade six. Grade six. <laughs> That's like the last year they're kind of cute, I found. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. That grade six, they're still kind of, and then grade seven, gone. Like it just, it ended. That's when I noticed it ended. <laughs> what school do you teach at? Holy Redeemer. Holy Redeemer, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> right? Are there any high school kids here? What high school? What high school yeah, buddy? St. what? St. Pius? Any St. Pius teachers here? See if we find some of your drunk teachers here. It's fun. That's a fun game, right? They shut up quick. Oh, God. That's the worst, right? When you see your teacher out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're saying the same thing. There's that little prick in my grade 9 class. <laughs> what do you want to be? A lawyer, okay? Are you, do you have a good average? What's your average? 85. 85, not good enough. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants a lawyer that's 85% proficient. Think of something else, think of something else, okay? Who needs a guidance counselor when you have me? You don't need it. I taught for 10 years. People say, do you miss it? Do you miss it? And I'm not trying to be funny. I miss the wrong parts, and, and, I, and I mean this. I miss spare, I miss, I miss field trips, coaching, hallway. I miss stuff, I miss the school atmosphere and some of the kids, but I don't miss teaching. I hated that part. That was the part I hated when the bell rang and you stood there and they're seated and they're looking at you and you're like, ah. <laughs> you gotta deal with the smart kids, they're annoying. I don't miss the smart kids. I can't stand the smart kids. I could never stand them when I taught them. I'm talking, not you. I'm talking, <laughs> no, I'm talking 98 average. You're pretty smart. 85's pretty good. I'm talking the 98's, the 98 average. Their whole life is their schooling. They have dinner, they sit down at six o'clock, the whole family, they talk about it. Hello, mama, hello, papa. They're not even French, that's how they talk. <laughs> I couldn't stand those kids because they're like little bosses. They're like your boss. Ah, uh, sir, you missed, uh, yeah. Sir, he didn't post the homework. Sir, it's like annoying, enough. Remember you put homework? This is what kids don't understand. This is what smart kids don't understand. When I put the homework, answer questions one, three, five, seven, twelve. I didn't miss questions. I don't know the answers to those. So I don't give them to you. Sir, I noticed there's a mistake at the back of the book. What? Sir, I just checked there's the answer at the back of the book's wrong. Okay. Do I think, do you, should you write the editor? No, going, no, I'm going drinking tonight. I'm not writing anybody. Anyone teach little kids, like grade, what do you teach, dear? One and two. Grades one and two. People wonder why some grade ones Dumb grade twos with the smart. <laughs> Is that right? That's how they do it, let's be honest. Because there's a normal, there's a whole grade two class over there, full of grade twos. And there's six in yours. Come on. They don't figure it out, do they? They're still doing grade one stuff. Yet to be nice, you're like, no, no, you're in grade two. Okay. Do you have a helper? You don't. Do you know what they are? Yeah, the loser kid that just thinks their whole job is to help you. Yeah. They show up at 7 a.m. There's a kid, they show up, they're just waiting on the steps, because their parents can't stand them either, so they say, go, get out of here. 7 a.m., the school's not even open. They, they just walk around the school all day. They got a big knapsack on, they just walk around. Just looking at pictures in the hall. They got, no, they're not. Not on any teams, not in the drama club. They're just looking for help, trying to help. Bored out of their tree. Hey, sir. Hey, sir. You want some help with those? I'm going to get the door. I'm going to take the attendance. I'm going to... No, I don't. They're just bored. You married, sir? I have questions. Hey, sir, you married? Yeah. I'm going to get married one day, sir. No, you're not. No one's going to marry that, buddy. What are you doing today? It's like 7.30. Sir, what are we doing today in phys ed? 
I don't know. I haven't thought of it yet. Some type of scrimmage. <laughs> they notice everything, the helper. Sometimes you're hungover. You ever hung over and you run into this kid? They're just waiting on the step. Hey, sir. <laughs> you're like, oh, seriously? <laughs> so you got a headache? Want some acetaminophen? <laughs> what? Want some acetaminophen in my knapsack? <laughs> Used to have to do presentations. Sometimes I'd plan them when I was hungover. <laughs> That's the hardest part of teaching was the, the hungover day, the class. <laughs> And presentations are garbage, let's be honest. Half of, half of you do them for your kids. We're not stupid, we know. You plan the little speech and you teach them little cute little things to do. They're garbage, they're terrible. I, get, I don't even listen. I gave everybody seven out of 10 the night before. I don't care, I'm bored out of my tree. It's the most boring part of teaching. And you as kids, the little kids think it's exciting and oh my God, we have no presentation. Oh, girls just panic, oh my God. And you'll see them signal to their friend in case there's partner. If he says partners, do you want to be? Hey, no, no, no. Not you, not you, not you. No, Gloria, not you, Tila. Do you want to be partners? If we allow partners, do you want to be partners? Okay. okay. I hope so. All right, kids, so I'd like you to find a partner. So excited. Makes their day. The two of them get to plan. Girls love presentations. The giraffe. We'll do the giraffe. You want to do the giraffe? Yeah, I have a picture at home. <gasps> Bring it. Maybe we'll get more than seven this time. And then they'd argue. It was hilarious. And they, they're, they're terrible. And sometimes they would do a presentation on people, and they would say the birthday. Oh, dang. You ready? Okay. They did a little high five crap. Okay. Like it matters, right? Okay. Hope we do well. Me too. Okay. They got their little cards for four lines they can't memorize. Okay. okay. Our presentation is on the giraffe. I was supposed then they argue, I was supposed to say that. Sir, can we start over? No, sit down. You got seven. Good. <laughs> Freaking tallest animal. Awful. Uh, the worst part of teaching was uh, marking. The marking is what killed me. When you teach history, geography, like I did, first couple of years, English, oh, marking. What? 125 papers I had my first year. 125. I remember sitting there going, okay, this is gonna take forever. Like, you don't, they don't pay us to do that stuff. They don't. They pay you to teach all, all day and then they go and do this on your own time. Do that, get out of here, go mark a thousand papers. What I started doing was I just looked at the name. I did. Sheila always got 90s. Why do I have to spend... First of all, her test is my answer key. I can't really give her less than... <laughs> How am I going to give her less than 100? <laughs> and you used to... Remember you'd get the kids with like a 30 average? You loved marking those because there was nothing. You're like... Whoo! Yeah. Whoo! Just lying, just blank pages. Whoo! That was easy. That was a fast one. I used to love those kids for that reason. What I would do once in a while too is I'd take a kid with a 30 average who the whole year probably got berated by his parents, discouraged. Once a year, I just pop a 95 on his exam. <laughs> just, just to give back, right? There'd be blank sheets and I'd have comments. I think you knew this. <laughs> and I'd give him a 95. Finally, I'd put, finally, David. This kid was like, made his day. What a nice thing for me to do. He'd go home, his parents took him to Swiss Chalet. It was awesome. <laughs> I, uh, I, have three, I have three kids, so. I, uh, I thought my kids would be athletes, because 
I played a lot of sports. I have a little, you know, I'm a little bit of an athlete. I coordinate it. I can do stuff. And I was excited when I had kids to get them into sports. And you know, it's, I don't see it happening. Like, the, the, <laughs> there's just no clue. Like, like my six-year-old daughter, she can't catch. And I'm not talking like, go, 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 and I'll throw you a bomb. I'm talking four feet. I'm talking, I'm talking, I stand, and she's just, I just do this. And she, like this. See, first of all, she holds her arms like this. Like it's a bean bag, right? It's this big. How do you not catch a bean bag? Honestly, a beanbag catches you. You just gotta touch it. And it wraps itself around your body. You just gotta get a finger on it and then you caught it. And she's like, no. I don't wanna hang out. I have, no, I have no connection to my daughters. I don't have a connection. I don't relate to the things they like. Any dads here with daughters? Like just, you have daughters? Are they with you? Two, how old are you girls? 24. 24, you know you look about 12. But that's awesome, right? 24. And you're how old? I'm 17. You're 17. And the two daughters? And there's a twin sister. Where? In the fourth row. Chuck her in the back. <laughs> Are you the lesbian? Is that why you're in the back? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know if parents do that. Do they move? Be <laughs> I don't care. If my kids, one of my kids is a lesbian, I don't care. I love them the same. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. All right, I might love her a tiny bit less. <laughs> Like, a, you wouldn't even notice. You wouldn't even know. Honest. She'd be in the middle seat on the plane. That's how you tell. No, I'm just teasing. Whatever happens, happens. So are your daughters three? Three daughters? And how old are they? 17, 24, and 17? Or 24? Who's the twin? Where's the twin? Why are you back there? What happened? You with your husband? You're married? Yeah. You're 24? It's okay if you are, so, because you're not my daughter. No. I'm totally kidding. My daughters can do whatever they want. Um, you're not married? The, are you identical? I can't tell. You know your husband's thought of that, right? I'm just telling you, you know he's on his own. He doesn't tell you. On his own, he's like, that'd be cool. He can't say it to you. That'd be, it'd be all right. It'd be all right if you switched. If you guys switched, it'd be all right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset. Awkward. Yeah, it's awkward, because you don't find him attractive, right? Isn't that the weirdest thing? No, but she doesn't find him attractive. You think he's gorgeous, and you're twins. Something's weird. That's a weird thing, right? So, Dad, when they were younger, there's a fear fathers have. We don't discuss with them, and we just wonder, do you know what that fear is? Because I, I... I had no fear whatsoever. You had no fear whatsoever. <laughs> You're lying, first of all. <laughs> because I'm not an idiot, because I have daughters. There's a fear. It's a fear you don't talk about with your daughters. Do you know what the fear is, daughter? Older twin? Are you the older twin? Yes. By how many minutes? One. One minute. <laughs> You're proud of that. <laughs> She's married. He saw you both at the same time and went, mm. but we're identical. No, you're not. We're identical, we're the same. No, you have a thing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Here's the fear I have. Dads have this fear. We don't talk about it with our daughters. We don't talk about it with our wives. We don't talk about them. We just live our lives hoping it's that your daughter is not the slut in high school. That, <laughs> That's, that's, it's just something you live with. You just pray. You don't know what goes on. You don't ask. She could be a slut, just not the slut. Because every school has the slut. No matter how old you are, right now you're thinking of a girl. I know you are. You're like, oh, no. And if you're sitting there going, uh, no, I don't think our school. You're the slut, right? That's how that works. It's you. No, I don't think so. But that's my fear. And I, really don't know if it means anything, but I worry because my daughters are six and four and they're always 
walking around the house naked, butt naked with purses, my wife's purses, high heels and beads, and they just walk around and they pretend they're on a phone, which is, looks like a prostitute, right? They're just walking around like this. They follow each other, they're on, they pretend they're talking, yeah, hi. That's right, 70 cents for an hour, that's right. Yeah, because we're little, two for one. 70 cents. Gotta go to the park. That's not fun for me. It's not. You know who I don't want to talk to at the park? Other people's kids. There's always that kid. Hey, mister, I'm David, I'm nine. Want to see me go down the slide? No. Where's your father? I don't want to, go, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be here with my kids, let alone you. You know what you can do, David? Jump off the top. So I'm bored out of my tree right now. I'd like to see what happens if you try to fly. That's funny to me. A six-year-old, I gave my six-year-old uh, an iPod touch. Didn't know you could text. So she texts me. She knows seven words, right? So it's hi, send, hi. So one day I got an email that said, hi, 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 hi. But it's funny, because remember when you were single, you would drunk text your girlfriend? <laughs> now I drunk text her, right? Because I just love her so much. It's my six-year-old, and I drink, and I'm out, and I know she's still go, hi, daddy, love you. Period after every word, hi, dad, love you. Okay, <laughs> learn how to use this thing. <laughs> All right, back. Oh, look at you, my little sweetie, texting daddy 50 times. <laughs> Hello, sweetie. My little six-year-old sweetie, I'm coming home and kiss, giving you kisses. My little six-year-old kisses for you. You gotta send that text to the right person. <laughs> I think they gotta change the wedding vows too, because this, well, till death do us part is, do you know how long people live now? Those were written when people died of the flu. They died at 32. How'd she die? Flu. She died of the flu. I had Tylenol too, but I thought, ah. <laughs> We've been married seven years. <laughs> I'll go home tomorrow, and it's not, I don't feel, I'm like, I, don't, I won't be like, what's wrong? What happened? <laughs> we'll walk in, hey, how's this show good? First of all, this isn't work to her. Sometimes she'll text me in the middle of a show. And I'm like, I'll get home. I'm like, you know, you're texting me <laughs> on my phone. You're texting me while I'm working. Okay, that's not work. <laughs> this is what she says. I'm like, what do you mean that's not work? She goes to tell stories on a stage. <laughs> this is work, running after these three nut jobs. She'll then tell the same stories the next week, so. So they went to your show once, Friday and Saturday, and it was the same stories. <laughs> Maybe you should write some new stuff. Maybe you should do that. I said, all right, you just keep talking and living, and I'll have new stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, so she'll text me, right? And she's got this little purse that her phone's in. It's like a purse wallet, and the phone is in, and it's like, like, she misses calls because it takes so long. <laughs> and then that purse goes in the big purse, and there's a special spy with diapers. Those are my wife's, my diaper sister. So I know when she texts me, first of all, she'll text me, and it's nothing. Hey, what are you doing? Just wondering, what do you want to do for dinner tomorrow? And they go, oh, what a day the kids had today. It was a fit, a play day? It was the drop off? It was great. I just dropped them off, and it was awesome. <laughs> for dinner tomorrow? Do you want to come home? Do you want to, hey, how did they go? Did they go? It's like a million questions, right? So I wait for her to put her phone back. Okay, send, and then she puts it back, a little phone. I just wait. I could answer right away, but I want her to go through the whole process. <laughs> then she puts it in the big purse. And then I beep her, and she's like, oh, that's daddy, probably. <laughs> let's get the phone out, and then I'll take it out of my little purse, and let's see what daddy said to all my questions. Just one letter K, that's all I put. <laughs> she gets so mad. So 
Sunday's football. That's what I do Sunday. Football! Yeah! It's hard to watch football with two little girls in the house, right? The four-year-old stands in front of the TV. This is what she does last week. She stands on Daddy. Daddy. They don't stop. Daddy. And you just try to ignore it. Maybe she'll go away. Daddy. Daddy. No, she'll follow her head with you. Daddy. Daddy. What? Want to see me stand on one leg? Not really. Want to see me stand on one leg? Watch. Want to see me hop? Like I'm hopping. That's my Sunday now. But this is what she does last Sunday. It's just how it's women, my wife, maybe it's women, but it's my wife. They don't get it. They don't get the football. I, I love sports. That's all I watch. Sunday, can't wait. 10 to 1. Okay, I'm popping my son with gravel, whatever. I just want... <laughs> I'm just trying to get everything in order so I can watch it in peace and quiet. I got the hopper hopping around. I got everything going on. I got the movies. Go watch a movie. My wife comes over the other day. My son's in his high chair. He's one. She's bringing a scoop of peanut butter. I'm like, hey, hey, ho, ho, what are you doing? <laughs> Ten to one. She goes, I don't see if he's allergic to peanut butter. <laughs> no, wait, wait. She's doing this on pro Now? <laughs> yeah, well, it's just... I just want to find out. What? What happens if he is? Well, take him to the hospital. I'm like, that's our day then? Better go to the hospital for four hours? I said, why don't we just wait till we're in the hospital for something else and give him peanut butter? <laughs> we'll sting him with a bee. We'll give him some crap. We'll, we'll give him the whole gamut of stuff. That makes more sense to a father. Don't do it now, then we got to go. Come. Next time we go to the doctor, we'll bring a little pack of peanut butter, we'll jam in his face. We're right there, uh, yeah. I told my wife, I'd never leave her. She could cheat on me, I don't care. Cheat on me all you want, I said, cheat away. <laughs> cheat away, I said. She goes, what? I'm not leaving you. Because I am not taking the three of them every four days. <laughs> That's the truth. She could cheat all she wants, she'd go on a date, and I'm like, go on a date, just bath them and dress them before bed, I don't care. <laughs> Here's a fun thing to do. My, uh, my wife was in a wedding party. Those are fun, eh? When people invite you to weddings now and you're already married with kids, you're like, ugh. <laughs> but my wife was at a wedding party and I was standing there with my girls and she was walking up the aisle with another guy. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> Mommy's walking. Who's mommy walking? <laughs> I said, that's your new daddy. <laughs> then I taught phys ed. Do we have any phys ed teachers here? Yes, that's the best job, right? Do nothing. <laughs> you don't, so don't even pretend, because I did it for seven years. So don't even, don't even try to turn to your buddy and go, he's wrong, no, no, <laughs> nothing. There's nothing. It's camp counseling. There's nothing going on. <laughs> but it's hell. But it's hell. Because it's screaming and it's menial things like getting balls and it's just yelling and screaming and fights. That's what's hard about it. And the only thing that matters is being safe. That's the only thing. <laughs> Every phys ed teacher is really good at that. You just, excuse me, stop. There's a ball. Uh, guys, we're not starting the game. There's a rope hanging there. Someone's going to hang themselves. <laughs> That's all we're good at. We're very safe. The problem is when you get married, that's not fun for your spouse, because I became that spouse. And my wife is careless. Yeah, I said it, she's not here. She's not safe. And as some of you, I don't know if you've been in this situation, it doesn't have to be a phys ed teacher where one spouse is the safe, cautious one, and one's just, they're always hurt on their watch. That's my wife, always hurt on their watch. And I'll never forget once in a restaurant and she, my daughter was three and she was up on the high bar chair. And I said, cause she was on my wife's, I said, you know, tell her to get down. She's fine, she's never fallen before. Like, So now there's a part of you that hopes she falls. I know, but that's, <laughs> but that's marriage. That's marriage. You want to win. You want to win. And she fell, and I'm not kidding. She had a, spire, she had a fracture of her radius, right? She fell, and I knew, because I knew athletic, I knew how she landed. 
screaming, holding it. I'm smiling, which isn't, which isn't good for other people in the restaurant to see, but I won. In my head, I won, right? And now I know I've got about four or five other times where I can correct her and she has to take it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I love my three kids, I love them. Just like hopefully you, you love your kids. <laughs> I just don't love being with them. I don't know if that, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense and I don't mean to be mean, but I love seeing them and it's like, okay, I gotta go cause I can't, like, I don't wanna be with you right now. Like it's, <laughs> it's torture. Six, four, and one. That's our, our ages. It's just no help, right? Nothing, just us. Saturdays suck. Remember when Saturdays were fun? <laughs> Sundays and Saturdays were awesome. Now they suck. Friday night, I'm depressed. I'm depressed. I'm not kidding, because I know I got to... I've got him all day, so I got him in everything. I've got him in, I've got him in every sport possible. I got him in gymnastics, just something where other people watch him. That's my, right? <laughs> the gymnastics, then they go to swimming, then they got tennis, then they got skeet shooting. I don't care. I don't care. I just want them in stuff, so I don't have to deal with it. I just want a busy day. Karate, I have my daughter in karate, she's six. What a waste of time. This is just a waste of time. She, she does this little thing where she yells. So that it's a kata, right? It's like a five move kata. And she stands like this. And it is cute because she's like, she's so serious. She really thinks she can fight. Like I would kill her and I don't even have any belt. I would kill her in a fight. Even if she had her black belt right now, I would just kill her. Makes no sense. So she stands there and she goes, Ingada! I don't even know what she said. Is this some Japanese term? That would scare me if I was another six year old. The kata does nothing. I think the kids run away because she does, da -da! Like that. And my wife takes it so seriously, right? Like, because my daughter got her white belt. Got her white belt. She bought the white belt. I don't know. My wife keeps saying she got her white belt. Yeah, it comes with the outfit. That's what you get. That's the first belt. Oh, uh, she got it. She got it. So. She got tested, she's six. One kid in her class sits and licks his feet. This is, this, is, this is what I'm dealing with. This is my Saturday from 10 to 11. Thank God for phones, right? Cause you have your phone, but she'll be banging on the window. Daddy watching? Yeah, I'm watching, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna throw up watching the foot licker over here. It's disgusting, it's disgusting. Here's the worst part. So they get to testing. It's a huge thing. My wife makes me fly home. For They're testing. Are you going to be there? Well, like I'm in the States. She, she, she really wants to fly home. She wants me to watch her color. Like, there's really no, there's no gauge here for me of what's important. I think you should be there. All right. I catch a, a red-eye flight. I get home for this testing. I'm not kidding. This is, this is trying to be a good dad because my wife's putting pressure on me. Dad, are you coming to my, dad, are you coming to my testing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, sweetie. I'll be home. Be home. Is the foot-licking kid there? Yeah, he's tested too. <laughs> this isn't even for a yellow belt. This is for one stripe. It's a red tape, which we have in the garage, but I can't say that. I'd be like, why don't you just do it on iChat? Do it for me on iChat, and I'll give you some red tape when we get home. <laughs> no, had to go, did it. Here's the worst part, everyone got it. What kind of crap is that, everyone got it? <laughs> the lick, the, the kid, and this kid's, no, there's nothing wrong with this kid. He's just a weird kid, likes to eat his feet. He got it, he got it, he did nothing, and he got it. My daughter's all proud. He's supposed to quit. I'm like, quit? What do you, why do you want to quit? I already got my stripe. Yeah, but there's like 17 levels. You know what she says? I don't want to kill people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kill people. That's your Saturday. Go to the park. I walk. It's a two-hour walk. Just to kill time. It's just get to 7 o'clock. That's my whole day. Get to 7 o'clock. I don't care what I got to do. I don't care what I got to do. I don't care who watches them. Just get me to seven o'clock. You're looking at your watch and you're like, oh God. Sometimes you play little games with yourself. 
This is what parents do with little kids. You're like, hey, it's got to be like four. It feels like four in my head. It's 10 a.m. What the hell happened? <laughs> That's what it's like. You want to blow your head off. You don't see the end. So I go to the park. This is supposed to kill time. Park shut in the winter, right? Oh, and then you get daylight savings. Yahoo, that was fun when you were going to bars. Not fun when it's on a weekend. Who put daylight savings on a weekend? Put it on a Tuesday night when they got school and they're gone the next day. <laughs> First kid, I, I can't believe how much things change in a marriage, okay? I remember with the first child we had. I remember my wife breastfeeding, okay? In front of me, she'd be like, don't, what are you doing? I'm like, would you just like, just knock, just look away, it's not. Now it's like National Geographic, just. <laughs> what? You tell which one's bigger? <laughs> Used to massage each other, right? You get scented oil, do you do that? Scented oil, same size. <laughs> yeah, you know what it is now? Butter. Like, what is that? It smells good. It's butter. It's all I can find. Let's go. Make some toast. Hurry up. I have my car stolen. Anyone ever had gone through that? Whew. Did you? Not stolen. So, whoa. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I have my car stolen. Anyone else? Yeah. You did? No, not, not stolen. Uh, I have a car. It's the worst feeling in the world. It's the worst feeling in the world. What happened was we left uh, our keys in the car, a spare set, and my wife left the car open. She also likes to leave the keys in the front door overnight. So we don't have a chance. We're already, we're already starting this process, <laughs> losing. You get the house keys with the car, the car's open and there's another key. We might as well just have a sign going, free car, take it. Go nuts. But I walked out in the morning, and it's, it's a startling feeling because you, you can't believe. And you walk out, and it's, it's not like it's your wallet, your, you know, your keys, where you're like, where'd I put my... But I did, I went... Where'd I put the car? I swear to God. I swear to God, I said, where'd I put the car? Not for a second did I think, oh, my God, it's been stolen. I still, I just, I was like, let me think here. I was... I was dead sober last night. I drove, did I park it? Like, then you go, and then I went to my wife. Hey, did you take the car? Like, no, 7 a.m. Gone. First time I've been through this. Phone my insurance. Nuisance, right? Biggest hassle. You got to replace the car seats. We have three car seats in there. You got to replace everything. You get, and, and they said you get a new car. That's the good news. Your policy, you get a brand new car. Okay, if they don't find it, you get a brand new car. And the cop took my description. He goes, well, if we find it, we'll let you know. I'm like, Pff. sure enough, they find it. And they, leave, and they leave you a message like it's good news. It's not good news. I got to go pick it up 16 miles. I got to pack up everybody because we have no car to get there. So it's a family trip to the tow truck company. They're the nicest people in the world, too. It was a mess. They had smoked in it. They drank. It was a joyride. They didn't damage it. So I had to get it cleaned. It's a nuisance, right? So I said to Honda, I said, can you change the locks? They're like, well, it's really expensive to change all the locks, you're not covered. But we can change the key so it doesn't start the car. I'm like, fine, change the key. So they can at least get in. Who cares, we've taken everything out, they can't take it. <laughs> Came out four days later, gone again, same thing. <laughs> they didn't change it, right? So now I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. I wanted to leave a note for the criminal and go, look, just, I don't use the car from eight to 6 a.m. Take it, <laughs> but clean it up. Don't smoke, just bring it back. Just bring it here so I don't have to chase it around the city in tow trucks, pack up my whole family to go get it. Like, just do that. <laughs> so now I'm losing my mind. They find it again. So I had to go get it a second time. So now I get cameras installed. I'm like, all right, this is enough. I'm gonna catch this guy. So I wait, I wait up with a mask on. And this is my thinking. I'm like, I don't want him to know it's me because he may recognize me as Jerry D. So I'm going to wear a mask and I got a golf club. I'm not kidding. I sat by my front door for 12 midnight to 3 a.m. Just waiting, thinking he's going to come back. No reason he'd come back that night, but I'm ready. 
I got the mask ready, and I'm gonna whack him over the head. <laughs> what am I, an idiot? It never occurred to me. This guy could have a gun. If he'd got enough courage to come to my house in the middle of the night, he has a gun. And the worst part is, if he shot me dead, the cops would think I was the guy robbing it. <laughs> like, good for you, sir. We we're trying to catch this guy. He's stealing all these cars. You go on in your house there and have a good sleep. Yeah. <laughs> It's a much different world to teach in. I remember growing up. See, I got cursed at my fourth day. And that did it. That was it. That took the wind out of my sails. Day four, I'm substituting in Toronto. Grade seven boy curses at me. That was it. I, I never expected that, right? It's just a bad kid. And now, this is, this is so funny. They label kids now. So there's this new thing called ODD. Has anyone heard of this? Yeah, ODD. They've given a label. What does it stand for? Oppositional Defiance Disorder. Yeah. This is what, so this is the, what the prick kids, this is what they get. They get a, they could swear at you and you have to say, he's the ODD, so. No, no, it's bad parents, a bad kid. That's all it is. Occasional Dick Disorder, that's what that stands for. We don't give them a label. They don't get a label. It's gone, now they curse at you. And I'll never forget the first day it happened. Fourth day of teaching, substituting in Toronto. And I think, you know, I'm gonna be a wonderful teacher. I'm, I'm gonna be the cool teacher. That lasted minutes. <laughs> Kid in grade seven cursed at me, said the F word over and over, over and over, over and over. And I remember, I remember, <laughs> this is how I was standing, I didn't know it. <laughs> this is a big teapot stance, I was like. What'd you say? And you try to sound tough as a teacher, but you can't swear. So you're just like, you will stop that. <laughs> Nothing. A couple more F-bombs. Go to the office. Not go in the office. So then you buzz the office, right? There's a PA system. <laughs> Hoping someone will come, because this kid's not. And I remember buzzing and thinking, yeah, I'm sending down a student. And he yells while I'm talking to them, I'm not coming! He's not, not coming. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I, I think I'm gonna quit. I, I, don't think, I don't think I wanna teach. Yeah, so, hold on a sec. I just quit, buddy, so I'm gonna knock the crap out of you in two seconds, yeah. I'm not a teacher. I uh, am fortunate to, uh, to be recognized on TV, which is nice, and sometimes what happens, um, people will stop me get a picture, which is really cool that people recognize me anywhere. And I always oblige. I'm like, oh my God. And I have this move, right? Where people will stand here and they'll say, excuse me, can we get a picture? And I'm like, of course. And I go, come on. And then I back up, right? And the person with the camera stays there. And I have this big move with my, I'm like, come on in. Everybody comes in and it's like, ah. I was in Halifax this summer. And this, this lady said, excuse me, go get a picture. I said, yeah, and I did this. I went, come on in. And I just, no one came. I was all by myself. <laughs> she said, no, can you take our picture? <laughs> she didn't know who I was. I have a cousin who's special needs. He's no, 40, and so he's been he's four years younger than me. And every month I meet him, we go for dinner. Here's the thing. It's Dougie, his name's Dougie. Not Doug, he won't go with Doug. He's very functional. He's a three-time, gone to the Special Olympics three times, and he brags about it. And it's, it was cute for a, a while, but now he brags, lies, and puts me down. And it's just, it's just not fun. And he'll, we'll, go to, we'll go to a restaurant, he shows up, he's got, he's got his medals on, he wears them, 14 medals. And Dougie, where's your medal, Jerry? Yeah, I know. That's what he says to the waiter. Hey, Jerry, where's your medal? Ha <laughs> ha. No. Not in my soup, like yours. 
He's in his soup, because... There's too many, there's too many. He can't keep them out of his soup. Every time he goes for a soup, the me he's like, oh, the metal, too many metal, yeah? Too many metal or too little soup? I don't know what it is, Dougie. Jerry, where you metal? Where you metal, huh? Jerry don't have no metal. He never won the Olympics. This is the problem. I said, what'd you say? You never go to Olympics. I had three-time Olympics. Okay. All right, I can't say anything, right? Because I'm a jerk. He's telling people now he's at the Olympics. It's, the story's changed. <laughs> so it's awkward for the waiter. You know, I'm at Olympics, three-time Olympics. <laughs> it's funny to hear, right? A special Olympian just dropped the word special. You can't, you can't just drop the word special. That's an important <laughs> word in that sentence, right? <laughs> I am an Olympian is much different than I'm a special Olympian. It's, <laughs> it's even sounds different. It even sounds different. And I don't even think it's fair that he's a Special Olympian. I don't know how they, they rate it. I don't know how you're, I don't know if it's, I don't know, I, and I'm not trying to be funny. I don't know because the levels, the discrepancies, like he dominated and he would make fun of kids. Oh, you not got no chance. Look at you, buddy. Over here, over here. Like he would kill, it's not fair. It's not fair. I don't know how they determined that he should get in because he's almost not, I don't know. I don't know what they do. Do they talk? Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm a Special Olympian. No, you're not. No. I'm a Special Olympian. Come on in. Let's go. No. That's not how they do it. What sport did you play? I play floor hockey, basketball, soccer, football, tennis, golf, tennis, golf, tennis, golf, like 14 sports. <laughs> what is it, intramurals, Dougie? You just sign up for these things? Like... Listen, thank you very much. You guys are a wonderful crowd. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Ottawa. Jerryd.com